Welcome back. Making corporate India healthier. That's the mantra for a global wellness firm's Chapathlon Lifestyle. The company has networked with over 400 companies and over 1 lakh employees for its flagship race. Let's discover the business aspects of fitness as well. There's Ravi Krishnan, the co-founder and CEO, who's joining us today. Ravi, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So first, just run us through the concept and what it's all about, how it started and, you know, everything about it, what we need to know. Well, I mean... It Stepathlon's predicated on, on combating sedentary lifestyles. The environments in which we live and, and work promote sitting or, or stopping. Um, and we as humans are meant to, to move and stop, move and stop. I mean, that's how we're built. Um, it's also meant to combat the three principal excuses we give not to be active, which is time, space, and money. So, you know, uh, we, we're predicated on 10,000 steps a day, which is a globally accepted benchmark to be active. If you do 10,000 steps, you're deemed to be active. Um, that 10,000 steps is a combination of focused and incidental movement. So yes, it's going for a run, playing tennis, playing squash, whatever. But it's also taking the stairs, not the elevator. Every time you're on the mobile phone, you know, walking around your office, yeah. right. taking every opportunity we have to move. Um, and that combination you know, makes us uh, fitter and healthier. And I think we need to reconnect. Our goal is to reconnect people with their feet. I mean, you know, the, the fact here is, how is this different from what, what you know, what, what we see with the new technology that's there? Because, you know, I believe a lot of phones, a lot of, uh, you know, you've got those bands. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the technical names of what they're called, because I'm not that tech savvy. Like, <laughs> not, not only the, you know, I'm talking about Fitbit, I'm talking about uh, fuel. There's a lot of new technology that's actually come into the market in that sense. So how does this really stand out? Is it the motivation? Is it the mass activity yeah. out here? It's, it's, a, it's a good question. And, you know... By analogy, I think the, the, the wearable uh -huh. is this generation's gym membership. You know? um, yeah. At the end of the day, having it doesn't mean you use it. PwC did some research last year. Okay. Uh, at that point, there were 223 wearables in the world, 118 dedicated to fitness, and the median time within which they went back in the box was three months. I have a Fitbit lying in my drawer, right. which I don't know how so, to if I'm going to charge for more a month and a half. Human <laughs> beings have a natural tendency sure. to start things yeah. and not go through them. Diets, yeah. you know, training programs, etc. Our philosophy is engage first and then make healthy. I believe we're in the human behavior business. Um, the device is a catalyst to change that behavior, but we are principally in the human behavior business. So what's the, what's the business model here, uh, Ravi? So you tie up with a lot of different corporates, yeah. uh, and, and that's a very big space for you. You're also going uh, B2C now. You're looking at, at going in directly to consumers. But uh, you know, is it through the tie-ups? I mean, how are the revenues generated? And what, what's the growth space kind of been like for so, you? So we, at the moment, we're B2B2C. Okay. Yeah. Our clients are corporates or organizations. Uh, they put their employees in, in teams of five. You yeah. can have put in five or, or 5,000. Um, and then, um, but we are looking at, as you said, B2C. Um, we are looking at various derivative models of, of what we're doing. But the first premise of this was to combat sedentary lifestyles in the workforce because you know we sit 10, 11, 12 hours a day. And that, impact, that impacts individuals, but also impacts bottom lines. I mean, research is clear. A healthier employee comes to work more often, yeah. um, costs you less in medical and insurance, yeah. and is more productive. So my pitch to organizations is you want to make more money, look after your employees. So um, the business model is very simple. It's like any other mass participation yeah. event. Uh, people pay to participate. It's 2,250 rupees uh, per person, 11,250 per team. And that's either paid wholly by the company or split with the employee. So give us some interesting anecdotes out here. So what kind of feedback you receive from clients? Because you know, this is something that, that's been going on for some time. It's not a new, uh, you know, it's, it's not been a recent one out here. You've been in the country for some time. What kind of feedback have you picked up from clients? What kind of uh, changes have we seen in some of the employees there? You know, I think the, the most, I mean, we're in business and, and, and we sure. don't deny that, but the most gratifying thing is the feedback we have. And we have like thousands of testimonials from weight loss. Last year, 51% of people lost weight. Average weight loss was five kilos um, to um, people with diabetes saying they've reduced or gone off their insulin medicine. Uh, people with blood pressure saying they've reduced or gone off their blood pressure medicine. People reducing their cholesterol. I mean, the, the positive effects of that uh, uh, are really the most gratifying. The other is, you know, spouses who come up to me and say, thank you, my husband's spending time with the children, um, as opposed to, you know, watching television. Um, the knock-on effect to um, the, the family is really, really important. Um, I think for me, we have a massive responsibility to the next generation. We became sedentary. Our kids yeah. start sedentary. And we're talking now about, you know, um, you know pre-diabetics at 25 75 percent of kids between the age of 8 and 12 having a vitamin d deficiency so we have a responsibility to the next generation also 
So you're also launching now the uh, Stephathlon Wellness uh, platform as well. Uh, you know, lots of mm -hmm. apps and things that, are, that you're looking at. You're also looking at not just maybe a, a one single hundred day event in the year, but perhaps something that goes on through the year or a series of events. So take us to some of the different things you're trying. You know, I think a lot of this is in response to the, you know, the great response mm -hmm. we've had from, the, from our customers and clients. I think at the moment, you know, we're in a very nascent stage as, as far as wellness goes in India. Um, as, a, as a country, I think we've historically focused on illness, not on right. wellness. You know, what happens after something happens? Exactly. The rest of the world has gone to prevention, say, 15, 20 years ago. So I think there's an opportunity to move the needle quite rapidly, taking best practice from around the world. Um, part of that, you know, several companies that have started with Stepathlon okay. have now come to us and said, can you deliver a holistic you know, platform? There are three aspects to wellness, right. assessment, awareness, and action. True. We're focused on awareness and action, but I think there's an opportunity to do something holistically and, and deliver a, a, a full proposition to, to corporates. So then let's talk about your calendar as well. What's lined up, let's say, in the next couple of months? What kind of events, what kind of, you know, you, we've heard about what, what you do with corporates out here, but are there mass events lined up probably in India or globally as well? Well, we, we already have a global footprint. We had participants in 34 countries last wow. year. Um, our goal is to, you know, you know c cover the globe. I mean, we're a virtual race and therefore we can connect employees, you know, wherever they are. And, and that's definitely an ambition of ours. Um, we want to create an entire ecosystem. We're launching um, a content, a digital content channel this year because we, we need to be a thought leader in order to sure. change habits. Um, we're launching e-commerce during the course of the year so we can then uh, further service our, our community. We would like to do offline events. Um, so I think, and then, and then the other thing we'd like to do is migrate the service into, into a product. Okay. So I think there's a whole opportunity in this space um, off the back of what we've started. Okay, so I, I want to talk to you a little bit more about your story as an entrepreneur. And I also want to actually bring in another guest who, who's somebody who's actually used the product. Uh, we want to ask him whether it took a lot of convincing uh, to, to get uh, uh, you know, the company on board and get his employees on board. We're going to come back uh, and speak to Atul Mathur from IDEA in just a moment as well. So do stay tuned. Welcome back. We're in conversation with Ravi Krishnan, co-founder and CEO at Stepathlon Lifestyle. And in this segment, we're also uh, uh, speaking with one of Stepathlon's clients, Idea Cellular. Atul Mathur, the VP of HR, is joining us on the show. Mr. Mathur, thanks so much for being with us. So, you know, Ravi was just telling us how he brings uh, all of these corporates on board. Did it require convincing when you first heard of Stepathlon, uh, you know, when he first uh, met you or told you about the idea or the concept? I think the idea was so uh, good and unique and simple that uh, not much convincing was required. And in fact, internally in the company also, uh, you know, it was quite easy, I would say. Uh, and that was the reason why uh, in the first round, our entire leadership team across the company participated. So, so what's been the feedback <laughs> from employees out here? What do they make of it? Are they competing internally? What, what have you noticed? Oh, yes, they are. Uh, one is that uh, I think uh, uh, they've become more, more active, people mm -hmm. who have participated. And also it's become a little aspirational. So for people who could not participate yeah. are also now aspiring to, you know, uh, be participants in the, in the following subsequent years. Uh, second is that this race which they conduct, mm. you know, uh, you know uh, globally is something which is really exciting because, you know, with, with every kilometer that you walk, you, you are in a different part and, you know, and that's how you keep progressing. So the whole packaging, I would say, is so, in, so interesting and uh, uh, exciting that it really, uh, you know, makes people to... Uh, you know, look forward and participate in that. So you're saying rather than be distracting, it's actually a positive because it improves productivity in terms of just sheer energy. It gets people going. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, so how many people at Idea do you do you now have as a part of this? And you know, what more are you planning to do with with Stepan? Sure. So, like I said, that like the first year we had our entire leadership team across the country, yeah. and we are a pan India yeah. operator, right? So we had uh, and plus some uh, select employees. We wanted to make it aspirational. Uh, so we had about 475 employees participating in the first year. Uh, the next year we had, uh, uh, you know, uh, female colleagues joining in. So we made it actually for them and people who are above 40, 50 years of age. So the numbers are quite large. And this year, uh, uh, frankly, we are actually planning to uh, go to the next level in, in the organization and, you know, look at people at the junior management cadre as well. You know, that, that's the interesting space. When we talk about how, how, how do you get more people involved, how do you get you know, more employees excited about a certain concept in a company as well, that, that, that's, an, you know, that's an area for you as well where how do you see growth? What, what kind of avenues are you focusing on going forward? Because as we have one of the larger companies in the country today using, one of your, using your product as well, 
What, what kind of growth are we talking about? Well, look, I'll give you an example. We did, we did 20,000 people from 140 companies in the first year, okay. 30 from 100, uh, 200 in the second year, mm. 60 from 275 last year, and I think we're targeting 100,000 people this year. Um, and a lot of our clients are growing with us. I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, uh, Vedanta, who did 1,100 people last okay. year, have targeted 10,000 this year. And you know, I'm heading to Africa tonight because okay. they want to get that, uh, right. that, that division involved. So I think one of the things about Step Athlon is when, if, if your colleague runs a marathon, You'll probably, most people will probably say, good luck, I'll sponsor you. <laughs> but when people say, I'm doing step athlon, they say, wow, I can do that. That's something yeah. for me. Yeah. Let me be part of it. So it's very much an I can proposition. Okay. Um, it also, because we are not prescriptive about how you get your 10,000 steps mm. or when you get it, mm. people can then, it, it's flexible. It's not an appointment exercise necessarily. We, we, we love gyms and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, Get your 10,000 any way that's comfortable for you. You might be a morning person, you might be an evening person, yeah. you know, you might like tennis, you might like, you know, squash, whatever, just do it. And, you know, I mean, like on days when I travel today, you know, I, I'll do my walking at the airport, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, airports are incredible opportunities. So see, see opportunities where perhaps, you know, you, you didn't before. So I think deformalizing exercise is important. Formal exercise is great and we're big advocates of it, yeah. but moving first is really important. So Ravi, you're also uh, an entrepreneur, and you've turned entrepreneur. You've always been involved in sports uh, and you know, and so forth. But uh, how was uh, the experience for you to sort of uh, start your own thing? What have been some of the learnings for you as well? No, I think look, I was a fairly late stage entrepreneur. You know, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't launch until I was 43 or 44. So I think you know, having been in the corporate world and and, and uh, having you know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer by profession, so having a bit of having been in a sort of structured environment, okay. I think that helped. We you know. We're a young company, but even when we were a startup, we didn't run exactly like a startup. You know, we weren't a startup in a garage, which you know, we didn't know what we were doing. So I always brought, I think, some structure and process to, it, to, to, to what we were doing. But at the same time, we are, you know, we're market makers, I think, in this, in this space. So therefore, you know, there's an element of the unknown. Um, I think I was lucky enough to have strong corporate network from my IMG days. Mm -hmm. um, and they were lucky enough to give us a shot. But you only get one shot, and then you have to make it work. Um, but it's great. You know, I think, the fact that we can have impact potentially globally is really exciting. Um, I have an incredible team, uh, you know, of, of sort of young, hungry, passionate uh, individuals. Um, you know, the fact that we can actually, you know, like I said, do good by doing good, uh, you know, is it, it, really, really, I think, very gratifying. So yes, we're a business, but the fact that we can impact people uh, and companies positively is, you know, is, makes us a complete package. So I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> Mr. Rathner, anything you want to tell us about, about your experience with, with Ravi particularly in terms of how you've seen the company grow? And then I'm going to end up asking him about uh, tips for young, and young entrepreneurs. I, I think, uh, you know, he has this very uh, infectious attitude, mm -hmm. right, and uh, uh, an approach. And that's why I said that, you know, in the first instance itself, it didn't require much convincing. Uh, he came with a, with a conviction and uh, I think it was very clear in terms of, you know, what is it that he wants to do and how uh, he sees the road ahead, uh, uh, which was, you know, kind of comforting for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think uh, uh, the two years that we've been associated with Ravi and we're going in, uh, ahead again this year, uh, I see a lot of uh, uh, clarity in terms of how things have to be done. Even operationally, a lot of times you'll find, for example, logistically, mm. the, uh, it could be a nightmare, you know, dealing with uh, this kind of a situation. And in our case, it's Pan India, so multi-locational. But I think they've done a great job. And I'm sure that they would definitely take it forward in, a, in the right manner. All right, fair. We've just got a minute to go, Ravi. I have to ask you this. What tips for some young entrepreneurs out there? You know, firstly, I think you have to do something that you're passionate about. You know, I mean, don't okay. don't just chase the money. You know, I think there's a we see a lot of that going yes. on right now. <laughs> um, I think you know, if you're passionate about something, um, then you know, then, then that's a great start. The other thing is, for me, my philosophy when I became entrepreneur was be a reinventor, not an inventor. Um, you know, and, and and we took a model that sort of existed, and you know, then sort of three words that I used when we were putting it down was you know, modify, migrate, and monetize. So I think you know, you once if, if you do that, and then and then. It's obvious and a bit cliched, but you've got to surround yourself with good people. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, Atul's been kind enough to mention me, but really, you know, I've got a great team that you know works with Idea. Um, you know, they're incredible. You know, and 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 we've grown together. You know, and I think that's really really important. You can't grow a business on your own, no matter how good you are. And I think that's really the, the most critical thing. Sure. All right. And, be, and be careful who you take your money from. That's the other thing. <laughs> Okay, that, that's something we're going to talk to you about a little bit more <laughs> offline. But thanks so much, gentlemen, for joining us today. Great having you with us and learning about Step Athlon. So stay healthy and think about that over this weekend. And I'm going to straight away start walking as we wrap up this show. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.